So I did a video earlier on these uh, 20 op amps that I bought on, uh, on eBay. These are uh, Texas Instruments OP07s, and these are super high uh, precision op amps. And I got 20 of them for $1.89. Um, of course, they ended up being fake. So I got my money back and got to keep the parts, so <laughs> I guess we get to play with them. So uh, why did I know they were bad? Well, I, I measured something called uh, off offset voltage. So um, let's go ahead and go through that again. So um, I've gone ahead and ordered and, and, and received some, some official OP07s, okay? So we, we can compare them against, against good ones and uh, see what I was talking about. All right, so um, the offset voltage is, there's, there's on an op amp, there's the plus input and the minus input. And the op amp does everything it, it, it can to make those, those two things be equal, right? And so if you put zero volts here and zero volts here, they're both the same, you should get zero volts on the other side. So if you ground this pin and you ground this pin, you better get ground on the other side. Well, maybe you don't, okay? And in fact, you don't. In real life, you don't. And, and so, so why is that? So before we, before we take a look at these, let me, let me draw you a picture. Uh, let me make sure I don't mess things up here on my, on my, uh, on my bench. All right. So the input of an op amp is two transistors, right? There's um, the the let's say the, uh, the the positive comes in comes in this way, and then there's a another op a, a transistor over here that is the negative input. Okay, so you have a positive input, and you have a negative input, and then these two usually goes down to a uh, current source, okay, to the uh, minus minus V, and then these generally go up let's see, with some resistors to the positive V, okay, and that's the front end of an op amp, right? And then you either take the output off of off of one or both of these uh, of these points here, and and then go do something with it. So. The way that this things work is current switching, right? I think I described it as a teeter-totter. I did a series on this a while ago. Uh, it's like a teeter-totter. So if, if this one's bigger, then the, the current flows this way and no current flows over here. And then if you go the opposite way, if you turn this one on, then the current goes over here and doesn't go over here. So the current's always flip-flopping whether the current goes this way or whether the current goes this way. So if you have these two at the exact same voltage, zero volts and zero volts, okay, then you should have equal amounts of current going through both. Well, you don't, because um, there's a little bit of mismatch. These transistors aren't exactly the same. These resistors aren't exactly the same, right? And so you'll get a little bit of offset. So if you buy a cheapy op amp, okay, it's about maybe one to five millivolts error. Okay, you expect about a one to one to, to five millivolt error, and that's like on the 740 watt one op amp. And these these uh, fake uh, OP07s I got also measured about one one to five milliamps. Okay, and we'll we'll measure that here in a second. But the OP07s uh, should be around 50 millivolts, uh, uh, microvolts. I'm sorry, 50 microvolts, microvolts, right? And so we'll measure ours to see if they're around 50 microvolts. Um, so that's 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 a lot better than than uh, five millivolts, right? 50 microvolts. So that's why you pay a lot of money for these op amps, right? The the little op amp should be a, a few cents, and then and then these fancy op amps. Um, even on the used market, I paid three dollars each for these. I think new these are about six dollars each, right? So they're you know they're they're made they're made right. <laughs> All right. So uh, I have oops, I have a little circuit over here. And what I'm just doing is I'm grounding, I'm grounding both the input and the output, and uh, we will put a, uh, we will put an op amp in here. So let's, I don't know, here's a seven, here's a 741. We'll, we'll throw in the 741. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm grounding both the input and the output, and I've got uh, plus or minus 12 volts into the op amp. And I'm measuring the difference between ground and the output, okay? And it should be zero. And this op amp, it's measuring 2.8 millivolts. So that's between one and five, right? And that's a 741 op amp. All right, 
let's pull this one out. Let's put in the other, the other 741 op amp that I have on the bench here. Oops, not going in the breadboard straight. Come on. All right. So this one is a little bit better. It's 1.147. Uh, so, again, between 1 and 5 milliamps, uh, millivolts, right? So, that's doing what it's supposed to be doing. All right. And then let's get one of our fake OP07s. And let's put one of those in. And let's see what it does. And it's between 1 and 5 milliamps, uh, millivolts, right? So, again, these are just junk parts. All right, take that one out, and let's put in a good one. So this is an official PMI O P O seven. So let's pop him in, and look at that, twenty microvolts, twenty microvolts. Very, very, very nice, and that's why you spend money on these things um, to get that. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's important, sometimes it isn't. But if it is important, you need it. So there is also um, a way to use cheap op amps um, and adjust for the offset. So let me let me talk that, about that on this piece of paper again. So if you have an op amp. Then um, there are these two inputs, and you want them balanced as much as possible. Now, an ideal op amp, there's no current flow on the inputs, right? You have perfect, perfect impedance input, but but in reality, you have a little bit of current going into these, into these, because you have to turn these transistors on, right? You have to have a little bit of base current, so there is a little bit of current going in here. So, if you have some circuit then you're going to have a little bit of current, um, you know, going, depending on what your circuit is, you have a little bit of current coming in into each one of these, right? And you sort of want to make sure that if you're going to use these things, you want to make sure that the amount of current going into both bases is the same. Then that helps you with this teeter-tottering. It helps you it won't make it worse, right? And it, it, it tries to make it better. So I'm not explaining this very well. Let's go ahead and, and uh, let's go ahead and draw a inverting amplifier, okay? And just for so I can calculate it in my head easy, let's say we have a, a, a gain of, of minus one, okay? And uh, so we have 10k and 10k. So if we have plus one volt here, you get minus one volt out here, right? And normally we would just tie this to ground. But if you think about it, there's a little bit of current flowing in this direction and a little bit of current flowing in this direction. And so you have a little bit of current going into here. Well, how much do you have? Well, you have half of it coming from this 10K and half of it coming from that 10K. And so if you want to balance it out, you really should put a resistor here that's 5K. That's the parallel combination of these two resistors, right? And then everything's balanced. If there's any current flow in the positive direction or in the negative direction in inputs, I should say, the positive input and negative inputs, they're, they're about the same. So you have five, uh, 5K impedance on this side and you have 5K impedance on this side. And that's the best design if you wanted to want to do this thing, right? So the other thing that you can do is you can get an op amp that has a way to um, adjust things, right? And so if you take a look at uh, like the OP07 data sheet and it shows you kind of a simplified, simplified schematic here, um, it's very complicated, but this is basically the input transistor and the output transistor. And there's this thing here called optional null, okay? Pins one and eight. What is optional null? Well, um, let's see.
So remember that we had uh, two transistors, okay? And they might be they might be mis misbalanced, okay? But what if you could do this? What if you could change this resistor or change this resistor, okay? And 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 balance the two, right? So if you had variable resistors here, you you could tweak them to get them exactly right. Well, you don't have variable resistors there, you just have fixed resistors, right? So this is a fixed resistor and this is a fixed resistor. And then that goes up uh, and they have a, another resistor here and that goes to the plus V. And so they have two resistors, one resistor on the top and one resistor on the bottom, but then they take these two pins out, okay? And they call them offset. I think pin one and five is what what the op-amp I'm going to be using uses. Sometimes it's pin 1 and 5, sometimes it's pin 1 and 8. It all depends on the transistor. And um, what you do is you connect a potentiometer onto the outside. Okay? And then you put the middle of that potentiometer to plus V. And you say, well, what, what does that do? That, how does that adjust the offset current? Well, let me redraw it. A better way. Okay, this is really what we're going to have. So part of the resistance is here, part of the resistance is here. So if we need a little more resistance over here, we can move the wiper that way. If we need a little more resistor, the resistance here, we can move them the, that way, okay? And so this is the way that we're gonna be able to balance these, these, this teeter-totter exactly perfectly, right? We can move this back and forth and zero it out, okay? Now, in, in the actual device, th there, there is still an additional Thing over here that looks like this, and that's because you might not have this attached. This is an option, right? But if you if you ignore those, this is what you really have. You have you have this circuit, and that allows you to to balance things. Now sometimes uh, this balancing is on the minus side, and you need to have a negative voltage to this potentiometer. And sometimes it's on the positive side, and you need a positive voltage. And and sometimes the pinouts are different, so it's different for every op amp. But this is basically the this is basically the idea. Okay. So uh, let's go back to our little circuit here. I'm going to pull out the OPO7. I'm going to put in a different device because it's wired up for that already. Uh, let's see. This one is a here it is. This is a nice op amp. This is a an, an, uh, linear technology LT1055, okay? Let's put that one in, 1055. And let's measure the offset voltage on it. And it's uh, 115 microvolts, so not bad, right? It's, it's, it's five times bigger than the 07, but it's still pretty small. It's not one to five milliamps, right? It's, it's point, point 0.1 milliamps, um, but we can make it better, okay? And so I'm going to take this potentiometer and I'm going to put it in the circuit. And if I just stuff, shove it in right here, then uh, we will be able to adjust it. Where's my adjusting tool? I'm missing my adjusting tool. Oh, here it is. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to Change the uh, change the offset voltage here. Okay, so let's let's go and take a look at it. So I can turn the potentiometer and I can move it over, move it over, move it over, and you can see that I can get it pretty darn close. And it is a little sensitive, but there we go. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Three microvolts. So that's how we can use the, uh, the offset null on, a, on an op amp. Um, you do need to add a part to do that. And even 
the OP07 has that adjustment. Uh, it has VOS trim, okay? So pins one and eight allows you to put a, a potentiometer across there and you can trim the OP07. So you can get it really, really good, right? It's already 20, 20 microamps, but you can, you can get it down even, even smaller than, even smaller than that. Now this is a discontinued part. So there, there are better op amps than this even now. I think this was designed back in around 1980 or something. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, I took a, um, I, I, because these are, these parts that I got, these OP07 parts that I got are actually the Z. Uh, it's an OP07Z. And what does Z mean? Well, Z means it's in a ceramic package. This is like a military ceramic package. And it enables me to, to come along and, and just pop the top off and be able to look inside. So I took a picture of the die. I was expecting maybe to see laser trimming or something, but I didn't see anything. But I'll put the picture here so you can, uh, so you can take a look at that. Anyway, I hope that helps uh, understand what, uh, what offset voltage is, where it comes from, and how you can correct for it.